My friend and colleague uh, Richard Gill has just put out a tweet saying why he would bet uh, odds of one million to one that Lucy Letby, that's the nurse who was convicted of killing a number of babies recently in the UK, is innocent and he uses a Bayes theorem to prove this. What he actually does is considers two alternative hypotheses. One, that Lucy Letby was a killer nurse. And the alternative is that there was a cluster of sepsis deaths in the neonatal ward which caused the baby's deaths. And he makes a number of prior probability assumptions, like, for example, that the odds of a cluster of sepsis deaths is much more likely, the odds of 10 to 1, than there being a killer nurse, because clusters of sepsis deaths occur in a neonatal ward about once per year, whereas you only get a serial killer nurse in a neonatal ward about once every 10 years. He then looks at basically two pieces of evidence which is that there was little evidence of malicious harm to the baby, but there was quite a bit of evidence of a sepsis outbreak. And he assigned some conditional probabilities to that, does some calculations, don't need to worry about the details, and comes up with the posterior odds of a sepsis outbreak, rather than a serial killer, of 4,000 to 1. I wanted to check this using his assumptions, using a Bayesian network. So I thought it would be a useful illustration of how Bayesian networks and how you do these calculations easily. And I actually found that the posterior odds using his assumptions are not 4,000 to 1, they're more like 177 to 1. So let's actually look at the Bayesian network. So it's quite a simple Bayesian network. We've got the hypothesis, which is either that she was a serial killer or there was a sepsis cluster. And the prior odds for those are, there you can see the 10 to 1, which means that the probability of a serial killer is 0.1 compared to the probability of a sepsis cluster 0.9. Then we've got these two pieces of evidence, little evidence of malicious harm. And what you have to do here in the model is encode the conditional probability. So he's saying that the probability that you would see little evidence of malicious harm if it was a serial killer would be 0.4, whereas it would be 0.8 if it was a sepsis cluster, that seems reasonable, it's twice as likely you'd see little evidence of malicious harm if it was a sepsis cluster compared with a serial killer. The assumption seems right. And then you've got the fact that there was quite a lot of evidence of a sepsis cluster. And he's saying that the problem that you'd get that if it was a serial killer is quite unlikely, that's 1 in 10. Whereas it's very likely, a 99% chance you'd get it if there really was a sepsis cluster, which seems kind of like okay. So with those assumptions, the Bayesian network, we can automatically calculate the updated, the posterior probability, different alternatives to hypothesis, when we enter this, when we observe this evidence. So we've observed the little evidence of malicious harm to be true, and that updates this. That increases, as you'd expect, the probability that there was a sepsis cluster. And then when we also add the evidence of much evidence that there was quite a bit of evidence of sepsis, and run the model, again, we come up with these posterior odds whereby the probability of a serial killer is just over half a percent and probability of a sepsis cluster is 99.5 percent. And that actually gives you odds of about 176 to 1 in favour of the sepsis cluster. So strong evidence in favour of the sepsis cluster given these assumptions, but not as strong as a 4,000 to 1 that Richard stated. So unless I've misunderstood his assumptions, his overall idea that he said there really was little evidence of militia harm, and if there really was a lot of evidence of sepsis, then indeed this would very strongly favour the hypothesis that there was a sepsis cluster rather than the fact that Lucy Letby was a killer.